let's start. How to find hidden gems in Google Analytics uh, in order to convert more? The first thing is that many people find it hard to use the data for actually convert, uh, converting more with, uh, based on, the, on Google Analytics. But whether you think you can or you can't, you're based on my previous experience as a marketer is that actually is really easy to uh, improve your conversion rate. Based on my efforts back, uh, back five years ago, I've managed to increase the conversion rate by 160% in uh, 12 months. So mainly during this session, I'm going to walk you through four main sections. First is data-driven conversion rate optimization process because anytime a system beats a human being, so having no system means uh, having no success at the end, then we are going to see how we can apply Pareto's law in Google Analytics uh, segmentation, finding anomalies in Google Analytics, and at the end, how to build data-driven hypotheses for conversion rate optimization. So let's get, get on with the, with the first section. The standard methodology for conversion rate optimization is that uh, you have a landing page and you generate traffic and uh, you check Google Analytics and either you smile or either you're not. Uh, the statistics are showing that more than 97% of the visits are not converting so mainly most in most cases you are not uh, you are not smiling the problem with this standard methodology is that it uh, is nose driven it has one size fits all and it's hard to perform on the long run with it uh, a conversion rate optimization methodology which is far advanced than that is first you need to define your buyer persona so you need to to, to do your homework and to find out which are your uh, buyer persona so what's their age, what's their pains, what their, their, their are their needs and stuff like that. Then to get relevant traffic according to this buyer persona, to get pain data based on the heat maps in the surveys or the user experience audits, and then to go to Google Analytics and to do their deep diving uh, in order to build proper segments. After you do the segments, you go to do A-B testing for each relevant segment end page, then you do personalization for each important audience and uh, page, and then you do micro-conversions or you do conversions. If you cannot succeed either on micro-conversion, either on conversion, this is wasted traffic, but you can also do remarketing or real-time bidding with it. So mainly is to use any kind of uh, uh, tools and uh, ideas so that you can uh, grab everything from the traffic because what we do know is that a uh, visitor stays about uh, nine seconds on your website and then leaves if you don't have something interesting for him. In order to add value on each part of this step, I'm going to, to sum up the things on the research. So in the first phase is the research. So you go to web analytics, you gather product data, you use your previously gathered data like, uh, I don't know, the, if it's an e-commerce website, you go to see the amount of spending, you go to see the cloud score of the visitors, and then maybe you can, based on that research, you hit them differently based on their cloud score because you want shares from them, or you, you use the user experience or the competition like with tools for such as Alexa or similar web, or you get marketing uh, insights. Uh, after that, you go to segmentation. The segmentation can be made either new versus returning customers or non-customers based on the geolocation, based on the traffic search, the purchase history, and uh, also the behavior, time, page view, search, uh, etc. After you do this, uh, segmentation, you can get qualitative data by using the surveys, such as uh, things like the purpose of the visit, to find out the biggest pains, the biggest barriers or motivations, to get the current satisfaction about uh, his provider or the net promoter score. 
after uh, this part of the surveying, you go simply to test. So you can test things like unique value proposition, the commercial offer or the pricing, you can test different persuasive messages, different layouts, navigation flow or stuff like that. Uh, and then at the end you will personalize according to the traffic search, the geolocation, we, for example, we at Marty Zipper, we offer marketers the ability to segment and personalize based on the weather conditions because the weather, as you might know, are, is affecting the conversions. Uh, or you can personalize based on the uh, cookies or the purchase history. So that's a framework that you might use in, if you uh, run off uh, of ideas. The second part of this presentation is how to use good old Pareto's law to build Google Analytics uh, segmentation. So as you might know, Wilfredo Pareto was uh, uh, making some observation back in uh, uh, at the beginning of the last century and uh, he came up with the 2080 principle. So he, based on his observation, he noticed that 80% uh, of the land in Italy was owned by 20% of the population. And then he extended it and uh, uh, mostly this, uh, this law is the same in our lives as well. I mean, 80% uh, uh, of our uh, uh, satisfaction comes from 20% of our human relations and uh, stuff like that. You can extend it everywhere. So the segmentation, it can be related with the traffic search, with the behavior, with the results, and with the demographics. What you can do right now is to apply Pareto's law in order to see, based on the traffic search, which are the 20% of your traffic searches which are generating 80% of your conversions, which are the, based on the behavior like, exactly like this, as uh, Avinash Koshik mentioned, uh, uh, a nice segment, non-flirt potential lovers, or the highly engaged, or the new versus returning. So what's your job in terms of segmentation is to find out where is the bullseye. So which, traffics, uh, which traffic services are converting better, how the people are behaving, how the converters are be behaving. Uh, what are doing the ones which are heavy buyers and then go, go further about them and improve that behavior to the other ones or from which demographic zones are uh, the, the, most, uh, uh, the most important convert, uh, conversions. So let me show you a behavior based segment for example based on time. So we have this, uh, this high traffic uh, website here with 66 million sessions and uh, almost 900 million page views. But if we look at the session dur duration here, f a third of them are wasted. I mean, there are below 10 seconds. And then, and then it goes, so mainly the ones which are converting are the ones which are spending more than three minutes on the, the website. So the ones which are uh, going to convert are the ones which are spending most time on your website. So What's your mission is not to convert more, but to change the behavior of your visitors. Here we have another example. So if you go further by on the behavior segmentation, we can see that the conversion rate for all sessions is 1.53%. Yeah? And we have 0.41% uh, on page depth less than three. Yeah? more than 10 and 0 0.59 on page less than 10. So you can go further in this case, for example, to see where is the, the step where visitors are much more likely to convert. So what you should do here is to improve the number of page views. And you can do this by doing A-B testing, by doing personalization, by doing on exit intent surveys to find out what kind of products or what kind of information the visitors are seeking on your website. What you do know is that mostly the, mo the most important uh, visits for this website, for example, as you can see, the average order value is almost seven times uh, higher than on uh, the ones which uh, 10 page, uh, pages viewed. Another uh, way to see this is uh, by breaking this down on uh, based on 
traffic side of the, on traffic search or on behavior. So we have here the sessions which are performing site search. You have the e-commerce all conversions, yeah, so all sessions. And then you have the uh, ones which are using a filter. So in this case, the most important behavior is the of the ones which are performing site search. So as you can see, the conversion rate is uh, one point something or two point something is 2.24%, but mostly the most important conversions are the ones from visitors which are actually using the site search. So another way to use Pareto is to see what kind of behavior the converters are having and to start to improve it and to incentivize and to use persuasive and uh, testing to uh, persuasive messages and testing to convince the other ones to, to go further by uh, actually taking action, not navigating away from your uh, website. After the segmentation, you need to, ta to take action. So you, you have these kind of segments, like the type of device, the resolution, geographical locations, or the weather conditions, the previous behavior, the current date or time, the keywords they've used, or stuff like that. So, or the visitor history. So he came four times and didn't buy anything and uh, that's it. So based on that, on these segments, you can take action. You can do Pareto to see, you can apply Pareto's law to see the type of device. You, of course, for, for uh, different countries, you're going to see a different uh, breakdown into desktop, tablet, mobile, but at the end, it's all about using the data, not just observing the data. Yeah? So you need to take action. So, for example, in our uh, engine, our segmentation engine, you can use this data that you, you, you grab the data insights from Google Analytics and based on that, you can take action. So, you can uh, do surveys, you can do web personalization pop-up on exit intent or you can do A-B testing to, to see how we can, uh, you can convert more on, this, uh, on these sessions. Uh, you can find a whole f a free ebook about funnel optimization and how to use these uh, segments and how to take action on data on uh, on this uh, on this link. So if you're interested, please download it and uh, let me know what you think uh, after it. after reading it. Of course. So we can go further with, with our session about um, anomalies in uh, Google Analytics. So how to find anomalies in Google Analytics? There, there were some um, answers from you on uh, when you registered about how to actually define an anomaly. So in order to define an anomaly, you should uh, first take a look at the data. So you, you don't have like a framework, but you can use this kind of segmentation to take a look at the e-commerce conversion rate. So mainly for if it's an e-commerce conversion rate or if it's a girl conversion rate, it doesn't matter. For example, you can and for for instance in this example you can see that from these kind of, you can just take a look at them but uh, doing deep diving and Staying more, uh, spending time in Google Analytics, having in mind, putting in your mind that you are looking for actionable data, so things could be improved. So in this uh, example, the next steps after finding this, it might be you might go further and uh, go into Google Chrome, and the reason is a possible stable website for Google Chrome version for free. So if you can see here. Google Chrome 42 has 54 percent conversion rate, while 43 has only 1 percent conversion rate. So mainly, it's all about checking things, monitoring things, going further and not, uh, not letting your website and not uh, just uh, uh, being pissed when you are uh, going to the conversion rate tab in, uh, in Google Analytics. Uh, another kind of anomaly that I've noticed on uh, an e-commerce website, for example, from the homepage, one 
So two percent of the clicks are uh, on the main slider or banner because it's this uh, habit of uh, having that banner. Almost 15 percent are performing a, a search and uh, almost 80, 80 to 85 percent of the clicks are on the main menu. So basically there are the browsers, there are the searchers and, uh, and there are these, uh, these guys which are clicking on your promotion and, or on your uh, thing that you're putting there on the home page. But if you take a look at the space that you are allocating between clicks and uh, so the difference between clicks that you are getting and the space that you are allocating on the home page and the conversions as well, you'll be able to see that actually the the, the, the slider has 80% uh, of the uh, of the space, but almost zero, almost 1% of the conversions. While the search field is generating 25 to 35% of the conversions, and the, the main navigation menu is uh, generating 50 to 60 percent of conversions. This data is uh, an aggregated data. If you are an e-commerce uh, website, you should take a look at this, uh, these things. And because mainly the searchers, for example, are very important and they are not so uh, well uh, treated. So, for example, you have here, uh, we've breakdown into We've made these statistics on fashion websites, on electronics websites, and on home, home and garden websites. So you could see here the what is the percent, uh, the conversion rate for uh, each types of visitors. So visits with outside search and visits with site search. So mainly there's a huge difference on all the verticals. It's, it doesn't matter the vertical, the difference is huge. So you can go up to on fashion websites, for example, it's 11% versus uh, almost 2%. So it's five times bigger the conversion rate on uh, the visits websites. So what you should do based on this uh, anomaly that everyone is using it as a standard because they are following uh, uh, all the other e-commerce websites, what you should do is to come up with a radical design. What you should do is to improve the site search, to use the third party tools or to uh, type uh, different text around the search bar or stuff like that. So mainly it's all about action here. If you want to change something, if you want to change your results, you shouldn't stop on just doing, you should stop on just doing the same things, yeah? Uh, another kind of anomaly that you can observe is uh, related to geo distribution. For example, here we have a website which is uh, really important in terms of conversions. So what uh, you can do for yourself in your country or if you are from the status as well, you can get a population, how many inhabitants are in each state, for example, and how many conversions. And then you can calculate this score. So you grab the data from Google Analytics and uh, you can see the conversions and you see the average penetration rate. But average is only average. So average, uh, you can see the, the, you know actually what means statistic. It's only an average. So mainly you have 0.51% penetration in Arizona in this example, up to 2.19% in uh, Indiana. And what you can do after that is what is the opportunity to go there only by getting to the average yeah, with, uh, with all these states. Of course, there are differences for each type of uh, business, but taking into account which are your main uh, cities or which are your main countries that you are addressing and how much is the penetration rate in it is going to give you lots of insights. Maybe you have a problem with your distribution there or with the NPS score or you simply don't do local SEO or you Maybe you can do web personalization so that you can put testimonials because people are more skeptical in Arizona or Oregon or Ohio. So mainly there are lots of actions that you can do after you are seeing this anomaly. So mainly Google Analytics, it's giving you lots of data, but the, it's up to you how you use it and how you, you go further with it. So uh, we can go further. I was... Uh, really fast, I think. <laughs> I'm uh, at the last part of uh, our session. So what you are doing after you are getting this uh, uh, insights from Google Analytics? What you can do is to use data
data-driven hypothesis for conversion rate optimization. So, a hypothesis, to, to be clear here, uh, is because this happens, yeah, because this is like this, then this can happen if we are doing this. So, in this uh, example that I'm going to show you, because of, uh, of the fact that searchers are converting five times more than non-searchers and the site search is 12%, the conversion rate can be improved by improving the search rate, yeah? It's like a domino effect. So you are hitting a, a piece and then the other pieces are going uh, at the end. So we can improve the search bar visibility and copy in order to see if the search rate will get better and in order to see if uh, the conversion rate is going to get better as well. So one thing that uh, one of our customer made so if you can see the, the difference between the two versions, so you have on the left side the original version and on the right side the challenger version, there aren't many things that are being changed, only the placeholder here and also the, avail the, the availability. Yeah? So search here, go and uh, see what you are getting from our website because we are open, whatever. So mainly what happened is that the search rate well, was increased by 200% and the add to cart rate was increased by 34%. So at the end, the conversion rate was better as well from uh, this kind of experiment. So one way to do these things are uh, mainly to, to go further by taking action into this, uh, these versions. So not, not you don't have to stay with the data there in Google Analytics. You, you, you should uh, go further and take action on the on all these uh, on all these matters so another thing that uh, you, i i want to show you is uh, for the price hunters yeah because the price hunters as a buyer con persona convert by 160% more after they are using the the filters uh, the conversion rate may be improved by uh, improving the usage of the filters. So, for example, in, the, in this uh, situation, we have uh, 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 a shop for an e-commerce website for watches. So, what we've did after we've seen this uh, behavior, we've triggered a non-exit intent pop-up so that we can re-engage the visitors to see the product pages. So the result after this, so are you looking for a watch in a certain price range? To save time, just pick the price you're aiming for. So you can, uh, uh, mainly it was, we were acting like a uh, uh, shop assistant. So like a shop assistant that mainly are, is going to the website, is going to, is assisting the visitor to go further and he's asking, before you leave, what kind of watch are you looking for? So, in what price range? So, the result after that is the, uh, was that the conversion rate for these visitors has uh, been increased by 74.51% on this uh, uh, category. So, mainly, what you can do here is to take action. Uh, this was the presentation. I was uh, uh, actually very fast, as I can see on my uh, on my screen. But that means more time for you to put questions. A few things about uh, uh, my company. So we are Marketizator. It, this is an award-winning integrated conversion rate optimization platform. We've won the best customer satisfaction prize uh, award on, in this winter on G2 Crowd. We are putting together A-B testing, personalization, and behavior insight surveys under the same roof because I was a marketer and I needed these kind of things and I didn't want to use three types of uh, tools and uh, different passwords and to get data from one to another. Uh, we are using, uh, we are delivering four types of segments in our own engine, weather-based, cookie, traffic source, whatever you name it. There are 3,000 websites that are testing with uh, Marketizator. And uh, because you've stayed till now, we have a gift for you. So you can uh, use this code, TATVIC, so that you can get uh, three months free subscription on our, uh, on our platform so that you can 
take action after you are doing uh, your homework and your segmentation properly and after you are getting insights from, um, from your Google uh, Analytics. So that is, that's all from me. If you have, uh, from now on, uh, if you have questions, you're, uh, you're, please hit them. <laughs>